Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. So today I have with me two of what might be the best keyboards on the planet. I mean, they may not be the two best, but they are certainly among them. This is the Nord Stage 4, and this is the Dexabel Vivo S10. Both of them are 88 keys. The 88 keys on the Nord Stage 4 is triple sensor, as well as the keys on the Dexabel. Now, the Dexabel uses the Fatar TP400W, uh, which is the wood hybrid keys. Excellent, excellent keys. They used that in their S9. That was the model that uh, was just before the S10. That was its predecessor. And basically, it was designed specifically for Dexabel using Dexabel specs. And since then, it's been used, uh, little uh, alterations made, but basically it's been used in the Studio Logic Numa XGT piano. And also a great feeling action. So both of these have really good feeling actions. You can't go wrong with either. But today's video, we're going to go through the similarities and differences about both of these because they're really close to each other as far as similarities and differences, even though they are for two different types of keyboard player altogether. First and foremost, both of these excel at piano, as they should. That's what their main draw is, is piano. As far as organ goes, man, they are both really close with organ. As for the rest, which are called samples or um, sample player, basically the Dexabel has a great range of that. So does the Nord, but the Nord also has a synthesizer section, something that the Dexabel does not. So basically, if you're looking at either of these, the Nord Stage 4 has three sections that it's broken up into, and that's the organ, piano, and basically everything else, synthesizer and sample playback. And when you go with the Dexabel, you basically got the organ section and everything else. Even though when you get to the pianos, you can highly tailor those to your needs with their T2L or True to Life programming interface menu. And as far as the Nord, they've got their own section here. Now, the biggest difference between the two is pretty much with Nord, everything is right here in front of you. You've got a knob or a button or a slider. With the Dexabel, you ha also have knobs, buttons, and sliders, but to get to the same kind of functions in a lot of these, you have to go through a menu system. And it's got a nice LCD screen to do just that. Whereas the LCD screens on the Nord, there's two of them, actually. You've got one for the main piano and main section, and one for the synthesizer section. So you've got two very nice OLED LCDs here. All right, now, the big difference is in the price. The Nord currently goes for $5,699 everywhere. Uh, and that's U.S. dollars. As far as the Dexabel, that goes for $3,999 everywhere, and that's U.S. dollars. So it's kind of a big difference. It's a $1,700 difference. Let's explore what we can do with each of these and what the similarities are. The similarities are both of them have a metal case. And they're lightweight, so for these two pianos, basically aluminum or whatever they're using, it's pretty lightweight for what they are. They're in the 40-ish type pounds each. They both have wood side panels. Both are stage pianos. And with the Nord, again, like I said, you got three sections, organ, piano, and synth, or sample playback that's combined into one. And on the Dexabel, you've got basically two sections, organs and samples. And of the sample section, piano is one of them, 
you can do a lot with that to specifically tailor to your own piano needs with their T2L or True to Life, which doesn't apply just to pianos, but for almost any instrument you choose. Now, both of these have aftertouch, which is a really nice addition to that. However, I have to point out the distinction that both of these come with a smaller amount of keys. You can get the Nord in a 73 key version, same kind of key action, triple sensor, all that kind of stuff. You can also get the S10L, L being light, and the light version has more of a synth action, but in the S10L version, you do not have aftertouch, so I thought I'd point that out. The Nord also offers a 73 key synth action. That's called the Nord Stage 4 Compact. So you have the Compact, you have the 73 and 88, both of which are the triple sensor. Really nice key action that is basically the Fitar TP40M. Now, as far as simultaneous notes being played together, the Nord gives you up to seven. You can layer or split, whatever you want to do, up to seven different internal sounds. Okay, so we got two in the organ section, two in the piano section, and three in the synth section. And again, I have to point out that in the synth section, that also includes samples, sample playback. And as far as the decibel, you have four internal sounds that you can play back at the same time. And, and that can be from the organ or anything else. So basically, right away, if you need synth and or sound design capabilities, your choice would be the Nord, because you can do that easily here. Anything from even basic waveforms like uh, triangle, sine, square, all those kind of things to more complex. And if you don't need sound design or a synthesizer capability, then either of these would be a good choice for you. Now, both of these, Nord and Dexabel, offer downloadable sounds from their sound libraries on their websites. These are high quality sounds for both of these. And that's really cool because unlike other manufacturers, when you buy a keyboard, you get what you get. You can't change it, you can't add to it, um, you're done. But since both of these are actually samplers as well, you can add to them. More pianos come out with Nord, more pianos come out with Dexabel, you can download those. In addition, the Dexabel also uses SoundFont 2 files. So you can get SoundFont 2 files from almost anywhere on the internet. They're freely available. And you can also use um, a third-party program to create your own sounds or convert your sounds to sound found too so that you can also load these into your Dexabel. Nord also has a program similar to that where you can create your own sounds or alter sounds and read those into here. So very cool on both accounts because unlike other manufacturers you really don't get that uh, that kind of offering that you do with both of these. Now, effects are a big thing. And with the Dexabel, they've improved from the S9 having two effects per part to now having three effects per part. You can have a total of 12 effects, three for each part, and you can have up to four parts. Now, when it comes to effects, this is the section right here for effects. And any three that you choose from a vast library of effects. Now, when you choose an effect that's not already on here, you need to go through a menu to choose what effects you're going to apply. And you can go further into detail about those effects so you can make much more in-depth changes to those effects. An example, if you're using uh, a reverb, for example. What kind of reverb? Hall, plate, whatever. And then you can go into that and change things about the hall or the plate so that you have much more control. And the Nord also does that, but instead of being limited to up to three effects per part, 
and you have seven parts here, like I said, two organ, two piano, three sample or synth parts, you've got this whole section here, which is just amazing. You're not limited to three. As long as you have this control center over here, you can choose an effect from the Mod 1 effects offering or the Mod 2 effects offering, which are both your um, Rompler basic effects, or the Amp and Simulator, uh, basically EQ, all that. You can choose from there. Uh, you have delay effects, including their new pump effect, which is really cool. And you have compression, in which you can also adjust. And all kinds of reverb. So, basically, one, two, three, four, five, six different sections. You can have up to six per Art. How cool is that? Let me reiterate about that. Each part, and you have seven parts, can have up to six effects. Not only up to six effects, six unique effects having absolutely nothing to do with any of the other parts that you've chosen. They're all independent. That is the first time I've seen something like that in a keyboard like this. That is just so cool. It's just, it's not been done. Not even with previous Nords. And when you get to the Dexabel, three effects per part. So a total of three times four, four parts. You've got 12 different effects that you can control. And of course, you're controlling the... Um, specifics of each effect. You fine-tune that with a menu, whereas here you fine-tune each one right here with knobs and buttons. Not only with those different ones, each one of those effect categories has a button called variation. So if you're doing a particular effect, you can hit the variation button. It'll give you a different effect that's related to and similar, but different. So this is really nice for trial and error or let's see what happens type of thing. So the effects on the Nord really beat out everything on almost any other keyboard. It's just so cool. Now, one thing that Dexabel has that the Nord does not is Bluetooth. And that can be a real advantage to people that, that are going to use that. So Bluetooth, Dexabel supports Bluetooth MIDI and Bluetooth audio. And when it comes to Dexabel, this is one of the keyboards that can actually act as a MIDI host. So instead of taking a keyboard that you like or, or a keytar that straps around your neck, which is a controller, and rather than routing that through a computer where you can choose, um, you know, soft sense or basically virtual sense or basically software library of pianos, whatever, you can take that same controller like a guitar or whatever and plug it directly into the Dexabel and it will work. And that doesn't happen with the Nord. So that's another cool thing with the Dexabel. Now, both of them also have left and right outputs for main or for sub outputs. You can route whatever sounds you want on either of these uh, to the sub outputs. You're limited to organ going to the sub output. So if you're going to be using this and feeding your main amplification or front of house, you can do that. But if you want your organ uh, to go to a, um, an onstage Leslie for further control, you can do that. You can do other things with the Nord where you can route whatever you want from the main outputs to a separate pair of outputs. So that's a lot of control that you're given right there. Now Nord actually has an extensive uh, arpeggiator. And not only that, it has stuff like pump, which is new, and that gives you kind of a, almost like a beat type of effect in which the Dexabel doesn't have. Now, Dexabel uses encoders, and I, I have to mention that these encoders work for the S10. When you go to the S10L, they're also encoders, but they're not lit like they are here. So when you're switching from one sound effect to another, 
and you're going from what you know, I can show you right here which from different sounds to others you'll see the encoders light up to the positions they're set for and on the Nord you have that as well but instead they have these LED towers and when you switch from one to another and you can see the different towers light up it shows you exactly what the position is but the levers on the feeders don't match up so when you go ahead and adjust that it actually jumps to where it should be all right and on the dexabel you have it right away it's set because of these led encoders and the same thing with the uh, faders so even though you have these nine faders here which are usually used for organs and you have the same thing here and you've got them all lit up with the led towers but when you switch from one organ to another on the nord it'll go to the exact position of the faders but it's going to show you that exact position with led tower segments here whereas on the dexabel it's going to jump right to it since it has motorized faders that is another really cool thing now not just the organ with the dexabel those faders those motorized faders can also control things like eq and mixer settings and external settings and volume settings for each instrument. That's really cool because what you can do with that is, I mean, you can do something similar with the Nord, but it's not gonna move faders around. But basically, when you've got uh, a gig at Joe's Bar, or at the Hilton, or at the Marriott, or at some ballroom, or a private party, and you go back to those, you can recall what you saved from the previous time you were at that venue. And it's gonna go exactly to where they are. And you can see right here, mixer settings, uh, MIDI control, EQ, and of course, organ. And again, you have the same thing here, but only with LED indicators. So when you move the fader, it's going to move the position of that LED. It's going to snap into place and you're going to go from there. It's so much smoother to go with the motorized faders. Now, one advantage of having the LED indicators instead of the faders is if you're in a very darkly or poorly lit venue, you can actually see where these things are. And as far as the decibel is concerned, you've got these faders against a white background, so it makes it easier to see. So both have their advantages and disadvantages, but those motorized faders, man, those are really something. Dexabel has some cool features too, like freeze and enhance. So if I go to the freeze function, I'm gonna play a chord here. I'm gonna hit freeze. So now, any key I press is gonna play the same chord in that key. Really cool. And it's gonna do that until I change whatever chord it is with the free function or until I shut it off altogether. The Nord doesn't have that, but that's a really cool feature. Now, as far as the organ, Man, it's a toss-up between which one is better. They both offer the same variety of organs that you can play. The Nord has Farfisa and Vox and B3 and B3 Bass, which is new, Pipe 1, Pipe 2, and then two user sections. And the uh, Dexabel has the same kind of thing. It has Tone Wheel 1, Tone Wheel 2, Farfisa, Vox, pipe one and pipe two, and you have a user section as well. So they're pretty much tied in that respect. Now, here's the cool thing. Both of them understand performer comfort. So when it comes to pitch bend and modulation wheels, most manufacturers have the pitch bend and modulation here on the left side, and they're straight up and down. So if I'm playing something here and I want to use these, I'm basically becoming a contortionist. So 
I can try to be as comfortable as I can with both. For both the Nord and the Dexabel, they recognize this problem, and they give you slanted pitch bend and modulation. Same thing here. You'll notice the pitch bend and modulation wheels are slanted. So as I'm having my hand here and playing here comfortably, it's so much better than doing this. Same thing here. Now, instead of a pitch bend wheel, Nord gives you a pitch bend stick, which on either of these can be programmed to be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be pitch bend. And the same thing with the modulation wheel. This doesn't have to be just modulation or that. This actually also is a morph wheel. So you can do things like morphing on each of these, but the morph function on the Dexabel is limited to organ. So it's a really cool thing. So if I go to Tone Wheel Organ to activate that, check this out. I can go, this is my from, this is my to. And it, this is just for example purposes. It doesn't have to be all the way up and all the way down. So when I'm playing, and I'm controlling this with a foot pedal, which is an expression pedal plugged into the morph. And I can set the from from any position of these faders that I want and set the to position to any fader positions that I want. Now, Nord has a similar function. They, they use this wheel as a morph wheel, but I can easily assign it to an expression pedal to do the morphing from there as well. So let me just show you really quickly a morph example. I'm gonna hold down wheel, morph, wheel and go all the way up to the top on this. I'm going to hold it again, go down to the bottom on this. Now check this out. When I move this, I'm changing the volumes on each. Piano 1 and Piano 2. Wait, there's more. I'm not limited to that. I can take a lot of these other functions and assign that to the morph wheel so that when I'm using the morph wheel, I'm not only changing what I just showed you, I'm changing stuff like the filter and other things all at the same time. And to free up my hands from that, I can just assign that to a pedal so that I can have both hands playing and use that more function. I don't know of any other keyboard that has something that in-depth or that detailed. And as far as the aftertouch, I can do the same thing with aftertouch. I can hold down the aftertouch button and basically if I'm using aftertouch, I can have that assigned to almost anything here to activate that. How cool is that? Now what's included on each? The Dexabel comes with a really nice acrylic music rest and a nice half damper pedal. The Nord, it doesn't come with any kind of pedal, so you're kind of on your own with that. And for $5,700, basically, US, I think they kind of missed that. They should have included a pedal with this, really, for that kind of money. And they don't have a music rest. You can buy an optional music rest. And here, this is... Uh, This is the music rest for the Nord. It snaps into place, but it's it's a nice wood. It's solid. Anything that you're using on here, or or the other one as well, the music isn't going to be jumping around and falling off of this, but it's really nice. The other nice thing about the Dexabel is since it's acrylic, it's see-through, so you can put a cell phone or a tablet on there and the audience can still see you playing, whereas with this, it blocks everything. Really nice, but if you're going to do a live performance, Unless you're facing a way where the audience can see the keys. If you're facing the audience, they're not going to see you play because of this. Now, they both have a lot of knobs and buttons and sliders on here. In fact, the Dexabel has 95 buttons, sliders, switches, all that. 
the Nord actually has 147. And while this looks like it's the cockpit of an airplane, you get used to this. Once you're used to this, you'll never go back to a menu-driven system because everything that you want to do is basically a knob, a slider, or a button. And it's so fast to be able to do that that to do multiple button presses to get to the right menu and then scroll down to the feature you want and then go and pick whatever parameters and all that. This is so much faster, quicker, and easier. So this, I actually prefer that for that particular reason. Although, if you're in a studio, you can get to a lot more controls, basically, with this, such as if you're into keyboard controls, if you're going to be choosing the piano action touch setting. With the Nord, you basically have light, medium, and heavy. And while that suits most purposes, light, medium, and heavy, you go into the Dexabel and you have light, light plus, light plus plus, heavy, heavy plus, heavy plus plus, normal, but you can also get to a section where basically you can choose your own velocity map. Not only choose it, you can actually make your own velocity map from scratch. You can't do this here. So if you're a pianist and you want perfect key action tailored specifically to your needs, that's the way to go. Now, while you have these 147 knobs, buttons, and stuff, there's also stuff that's written underneath some of these knobs and buttons. Basically, they have a shift key on two different places of this, so you can either do this or hold it down here while doing that. But uh, they have two different places where there's a shift key, and when you press shift, you get to the function that's written below that key. So almost double the kind of things. Now, there are areas where you're not going to be able to do exactly what you want with just the buttons, knobs, faders, all that. So they do have some menus. They're limited, but you do have menus to get into more detail and more program. So that's basically the differences, and I'm sure I missed a little bit, but um, there's so much to both of these keyboards that... Uh, you just have to get to a dealer and try this. And if you're unable to do that, I have some extensive video coverage of both of these on my YouTube channel. So basically, you can't go wrong with either of these. Now, if you're interested in purchasing either of these, do see the description below. So I hope this has helped you out, Piano Man Chuck. Peace out. Thanks for watching.